Well, everybody, hey, whoa. <laughs> to get everybody's attention, it is my job supposedly to introduce the governor, but uh, he's done a pretty good job of that for himself. But I want to welcome you all to Ori Georgetown Tech and to the Myrtle Beach Conway area. And uh, like I said, we are excited to have, I think, the best candidate to run for president in many, many years here today. And I don't know how many of y'all know this, but as a member of the Armed Services Committee, this is the man who exposed them spending $10,000 on hammers and $5,000 on nails in the 80s. And as chairman of the Budget Committee, he's the one who balanced the budget for the first time since Andrew Jackson was president, and it hadn't been done since. When Ohio found itself in a hole for about two, about eight billion dollars in the hole, they elected this man governor, and he got him to a two billion dollar surplus and four hundred thousand jobs. How about that? So I can't think of anything that we need more than this man, John Casey, to be the next president of the United States. a man who has who knows this man very very well one of his cabinet officials mr colonel thompson who was in charge of veteran affairs in ohio when he was the governor he's a member of his cabinet has also joined us and it's my honor to introduce him and he's going to introduce the governor so here we go well i'm going to make this really short and sweet uh, because you want to hear the governor now tommy so uh thanks so much for being here today i really appreciate it i understand there's some high school folks out there that are involved in some advanced uh, uh, college placement courses, so good for you. Well, I have the honor to introduce the governor. It's an honor to me because I know so much about this gentleman, and I don't need to say much because you're going to hear he speaks from the heart. And if you saw that clip on TV yesterday where that young man came up from Georgia and um, told his story, that, that speaks to this man here. So, uh, and, and remember, when you're voting uh, on Saturday, you're not only voting for a person that could be the president, you're voting for a person that could be, that would be the commander in chief, okay? And here's a man with a medal, 18 years on the Armed Services Committee and so forth. And I work, I know working for him as the vets director, what he thinks about all of our citizens and a special place for our military and for our veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, our next commander in chief, our next president, John Casey. Raise your, raise your hands, okay? We've got a lot, okay. Um, first of all, about this school. I had a lady today telling me about all the debt that her son has rung up, and that is not unusual to hear today from people who go to what place. I can't remember what it was. And I looked at a couple of the people. I said, well, we don't have a very good turnout here today. And they said, you're a keen observer. Um, <laughs> and you know what? It just never, I made, the, I made the best I could out of it and had a great time. And we left that place and, and then by the time it was over, I'd have three, four hundred people. I flew down here, I went to Sun City, had a thousand. So I do believe that, that that average person can make it all the way to the top. And you don't have to take orders from anybody. You know, it's been tough for me to raise money to get visibility. You didn't know who I was until about a week ago, probably. You thought my name was Governor of Ohio. Uh, and, um, you know, and it could happen. I don't know that it will happen, but it could. And so nobody's going to rip me off on the road to that. Um, but we want to make sure that people in our country know that for those that want to stand up against the big shots, the big shots can't stop you. You, and you don't want to cave into them. You think I'm going to cave into big at this time of my life? You forget it, you know. And um, I'm not against the people. I'm not against the establishment. I, if you're against them, then you're always fighting. You don't get anywhere. But they're not going to tell me what to do. I don't know if you believe what I'm telling you, but I've had been in more fights in my life. But I have won most of them. I have won most of them. And there's a real reason to be excited about the possibility of change. If you know what you're doing, you don't give up. That's what I would tell you. Yes, ma'am, right there. As Commander-in-Chief, how are you going to protect us? What's your foreign policy? 
Well, what would you think I ought to be doing? Give me a sense. I think you should be, well, you're getting me to answer the question. I think you should be. <laughs> I think you should be. I see it works a lot better that way. <laughs> Let me answer your question. First of all, we're going to have to spend more money on defense. Probably about a, I have a, I have reserved a hundred billion dollars. But I talked to John McCain today, just a little bit ago. We had a major, major weapon system that cost overran by two billion dollars. I mean, we can't be, like, wasting money. So he's now putting the service chiefs in charge. You don't build the system on time and on budget, we're holding you accountable. We need to do that. Because we can't be throwing money at this problem. Because if we do, we waste money, and then the money that needs to go out to the people who are fighting the wars doesn't get there. So we need to reform inside of the Pentagon, but we're going to have to spend more money. And then what do we do? We don't want to be traipsing all over the world, getting involved in every war. If there's a civil war going on, you know, these nasty civil wars, we should stay out. But if there is something that's happening that threatens our direct interests, then we don't have any choice but to have to act. If we look the other way, we go backwards. We do have to destroy ISIS. And we have to destroy them, not just alone, but these Muslim Arab countries. They gotta help us just like they did in the first Gulf War. And the European countries have to help us. But you're not gonna get it done just from flying airplanes. You're gonna have to be in the air, on the ground, and we're gonna have to go as a team and destroy them. And once they're destroyed, we get to come home, get the hell out of that place and let them figure it out, okay? And um, we, gotta, we gotta say what we mean and mean what we say. And then here at home, we've gotta make sure our counterterrorism task force they're all over the country, and they're made up, they're run by the FBI, Homeland Security, state and local law enforcement. They are the ones that disrupt these plots that these radicals are trying to spring on us. And that's part of the debate about this business of the Apple phone and who gets to know what, and I would just give you my impression of that. Why don't they sit in the room and figure it out instead of trying to figure it out in a courtroom? And why doesn't the president call them all in and say, I, we've got to stop the nonsense. If this is a national security issue, there'll be a check on it. We're not interested in having the, the companies get in the middle of divorce proceedings or some of these other things by opening these phones. But when it's related to, to national security issues, we've got to have a way to resolve it so we know what's going on. But that's adult leadership. Social Security, not just for the seniors, but also for all of the young people. And secondarily, it says in your brochure, when you took over this governor, you had 89 cents in the mini day fund. Yeah, in the surplus, right. What'd you spend it on? <laughs> <laughs> One guy wrote a check for 89 cents to double it. So now we have two billion, which is really amazing, right? And that's called management. The Social Security system can be fixed. I mean, frankly, if we had fixed it 15, 16, 17 years ago, it wouldn't have been as difficult as it is now. But here's the way it's going to work. If you have been wealthy, you're going to get less of your Social Security, not zero, so that those that depend, really depend on Social Security, are going to get what they need, what they depend on. And uh, in order to get that done, you're going to have to pass that through a Republican and Democrat coalition of people who want to fix it. And if you set that up so that those up here get less and those down here that are dependent get what they need, it will fix the system forever. And that's what we need to get done. And I want to do it within the first 100 days. Have a plan before the Congress in 100 days and get the people to say enough is enough, fix Social Security. Is that the means testing? Is that the means testing? Yeah, it really, it's basically what you could call it. Yeah, be means testing. So if you, even though you've contributed, and you think like I, I want to have it all, it's not going to work out because the numbers don't work. And it would make sure that these young people would be in a position to be able to. What, what was wrong? What do you people got an itch or what? So that's that's what we would do, sir. All right, I'm going to go you, and then she's going to have the last word. All right, kid, what do you want? Uh, my name is Robert Calhoun. I'm a self-employed political science student at Coastal Carolina, Red Cross Street. 
Um, I actually am just starting on a research paper about party platforms, and I was wondering if there are any um, positions that you would be comfortable admitting that you do not fall under the Republican platform. Well, we haven't written it yet. So, uh, you know, I mean, look, let me, let me just tell you, but to be honest with you, the Republican platform is sort of a guidance, but I, I don't, I've never read one, to tell you the truth. Um, and if I, if I get to be the nominee, I will be able to appoint the, the members of the platform committee to get most of what I would be comfortable with. Are there some things they're going to put in there that I wouldn't like? Probably. Is there, do you have friends? Okay. Um, no, I believe he has friends. I mean, I just, I got other people waiting, and here's the thing. Here's the thing, if you are mad at me because I have to go or you don't like me, don't tell anybody. Okay? <laughs> but if you like me, get on the phone the next day or so and tell people, give the guy a chance, because I want to take the campaign all across America, which I intend to do.